Good morning and uh, welcome back to the NPTEL course on classics in total synthesis part 1. And today, so we will talk about a very important uh, natural product called taxol and we discuss at least 4 total synthesis of taxol and the first one we will talk about is total synthesis of taxol reported by Nikolov. So, this is a complex structure of uh, taxol as you can see here there are 4 rings. So, these 4 rings are A, you can see A ring which is, which is a 6 membered ring and B ring which is supposed to be the more complex one which is uh, an 8 membered ring. Then we have C ring which is a 6 membered ring and D ring which is a 4 membered ring which is oxytane. In addition, we also have an ester substituent. Okay. This was isolated uh, from the bark of Pacific yew tree way back in 1962. But the, the elucidation of structure took quite some time, almost it took 10 years to get the correct structure of taxol. So, this was isolated and elucidated by two natural product chemists called Ball and Vani and they propose the structure through X-ray. Obviously, when you look at this molecule, it is quite complex and more importantly, this molecule showed a wonderful activity against the ovarian and breast cancer. So, many groups across the globe so wanted to work on the total synthesis of this molecule and about uh, 200 groups worked on this molecule and so far um, about 10 people have successfully completed the total synthesis of taxol. So, why this molecule is so important? Okay. And if you look at this molecule, first of all, this molecule was isolated from the Pacific yew tree. Okay. The Pacific yew tree is a very, very slow growing tree. Okay. And this was isolated from the bark of Pacific yew tree. And if you need 300 milligram of taxol, Okay. You have to kill one, one Pacific yew tree which is 100 year old. Okay. You can imagine a single 100 year old Pacific yew tree may maximum give 300 milligram of taxol and that may be about sufficient for one single dose of a cancer patient. Okay. Then you can imagine if you want to produce uh, more taxol then there should be other ways it cannot be from the natural source. Nature has shown a way. Okay, here it is a molecule, okay, you can identify and then see this is this could be used for the treatment of ovarian and breast cancer. Now, you make your own. Okay. So, that was the biggest challenge nature has given. Okay. And interestingly, the second major problem for taxol was the Pacific yew tree is a very, very slow growing tree as it was isolated from the bark of Pacific yew tree, if you have to isolate more of taxol, you have to kill this tree okay? and then it will take so many years to grow. But interestingly and surprisingly, the leaves, the leaves of Pacific yew tree has another natural product called 10-D-acetylbacatin-3. Okay? If you look at this structure 10-D-acetylbacatin, and compare it with taxol, you will see there are two things which are missing in this 10 d acetyl -bacatin. One is obviously the acetate group is not there here, the acetyl group is not there, only free hydroxyl is there. And the second major change is the hydroxyl group. This hydroxyl group in the case of taxol, it has a long side chain with two chiral centers. Okay, that is missing in 10 d acetyl -bacatin. But the good thing about this 10 d acetyl which is being isolated from uh, Pacific yew tree's leaves is that by simple functional group transformation, one should be able to introduce the acetate here as well as the side chain here. That will constitute the semi-synthesis of taxol. See, already I discussed what is semi-synthesis in the first lecture. So, you have this isolated from the leaves of Pacific yew tree. Now, through functional group transformation, one should be able to make taxol. Another most important thing about this is these leaves can grow faster, okay? unlike the tree. The tree though the tree is a slow growing tree, but the leaves 
grow can grow faster. So you can pluck the leaves and isolate the 10 d acetyl in from there you can, can you can make taxol but after some time the leaves will grow again okay again you can pluck the trees and then isolate 10 d acetyl in and so on so that way so the leaves played a very very important role initially in the synthesis of taxol however considering the complexity of the natural product you know it was always you know big challenge for many synthetic chemists across the globe to think about a good synthesis for this interesting molecule. So as I said already 200 groups worked on this molecule and there were people who were also interested in making several analogs of taxol that is just because when you have 10 d acetyl bacatine, okay, that is a core structure of taxol. From there not only one can attach the side chain, okay, not only you can attach the side chain as well as acetate, you can introduce different side chain. Okay. So, when you do that who knows the analogs of taxol may be more active than taxol. So, that is how Portier he made a derivative of taxol and if you look at these two you can see there are two changes okay. closely if you observe in, the, in this molecule there is no OAC you have free hydroxyl group and you have free hydroxyl group you know it, it is good for solubility. Okay, it, it will have better solubility. Another thing is in the side chain you have a tertiary butyl group whereas in taxol you have phenyl group. These are the two major changes in this analog and this is called taxotere or docetaxol. Okay, this was reported by Pierre Poti from CNRS and later you know he, he licensed to uh, now the company called Sanofi Aventis earlier it was Lundblom. Then as I said some of the analogs may be more potent than taxol and this was two times more potent than taxol. Okay, so, the docetaxel is currently being used for the treatment of ovarian and breast cancer and the, the CNRS and the Pieri Bautier got lot of royalty from Sanofi Aventis for this drug. And these are the people uh, who completed a total synthesis or formal synthesis and starting from you know, different different sources, different starting materials, okay, so they could complete the total synthesis of taxol. But today what I will do, I will talk about uh, the total synthesis of uh, Niccolo. I, in this lecture series, I will talk about uh, four total synthesis uh, uh, from Robert Halton. In fact, he was the first one to report uh, the total synthesis of taxol and the second one from KC Nicholas group who actually their work published in Nature and the third one by Samuel Danishevsky's group and fourth one by Paul Wenders group. Okay, I will try to cover these four total synthesis and today we will start with Nicholas total synthesis. As I said it is a very complex molecule there are many challenges uh, you know to make this molecule and first of all if you look at this molecule there are so many chiral centers and they are all congested particularly in the C ring and B ring you can see they are all very very congested. Okay. And the second problem which most of the synthetic chemists faced in the synthesis of taxol is the construction of 8 membered ring. The construction of 8 membered ring is not uh, that easy so we all know. Uh, so that, that has created uh, quite a bit of problem for many many synthetic chemists. And the third challenge is the tricyclic core that is 686. So, these two that is A and B if you look at, so they are bridge system, they are they connected by through a bridge whereas B and C are fused system, okay. The 686 uh, carbocyclic system uh, gave a different type of uh, problems for synthetic chemists while attempting the total synthesis. So, let us see how Niccolo thought about um, uh, making this molecule. So, first and then foremost the retrosynthesis was obviously you know you can remove the side chain that is the easiest one. Keep the side chain out and what you get is this compound okay. So, one can always attach the side chain later okay. So, that will give you this intermediate okay. Now, next one is you remove or break the CO bond. The reason for breaking the CO bond is you know there is a double bond once you have the double bond you can do the allylic oxidation to get the hydroxyl group. 
that reduces the oxygen functionality in A ring and this became the target molecule. Okay. Now if you look at this, this could be obtained from this cyclic carbonate. Okay. This cyclic carbonate if you treat with phenyl magnesium bromide or phenyl lithium then they should open up to give this benzoate and a free hydroxyl group. Okay. So, with that idea the two hydroxyl groups were protected as cyclic carbonate. Now, this can be obtained from this double bond. If you look at this from here if you do a hydroboration stereo and regio selective hydroboration one should be able to get hydroxyl group here. Once you have that then one can get this oxytane ring. Okay. So, that was the idea and if you look at this particular molecule then the 8 membered ring, 8 membered ring can be obtained by a well known reaction called McMurray coupling. So, if you have a dialdehyde, dialdehyde then under McMurray coupling it can give a diol. Okay. Once you have diol you should be able to differentiate the diol and then oxidize one of them. Okay. So, the precursor for this keto, this keto alcohol is this dialdehyde. Now, if you look at this dialdehyde, the dialdehyde can be obtained from corresponding primary alcohol, is not it? Protected primary alcohol. Normally, you remove the protecting group and oxidize, you will get this compound. Now, how do you get this? So, this is very interesting transformation. What he did was he broke this bond. Okay. And kept the vinyl lithium species on the left hand side, on the other side you have naldehyde. Okay. This vinyl lithium species can be prepared by or through eschen mosher reaction. If you have a tosyl hydrazone and treat with butyl lithium, it will generate vinyl lithium. Once you have vinyl lithium, and then you can quench with aldehyde to get the allylic alcohol. Okay. Now, these two can be obtained from a simple precursor. So, since you need a tosyl hydrazone to generate this vinyl lithium species, the tosyl hydrazone can be obtained from the corresponding ketone, isn't it? Now, this ketone as you know can be obtained from this diene and the dienophile. So, here the dienophile, this is a ketene equivalent. So, you should have a diene equivalent like this alpha chloroacrylonitrile and this diene should undergo diel sol reaction followed by hydrolysis one should get the keto. And this can be obtained from this ester upon reduction and then protection and that can be obtained from ethyl acetoacetate and acetone. So, aldol reaction to get that. So, the simple starting material which was used for the total synthesis of taxol by Nikolov is ethyl acetoacetate, okay? ethyl which is commercially available and very inexpensive. The other one again if you look at this, this diol if you remove and then connect it here, the primary alcohol if you connect it here you get a lactone. Okay? Now, this lactone if you carefully look at it can be obtained by a diel sol reaction. How this, this one, this bond is broken, now this alcohol is attacking here. Okay. If that is the case, then you will get this, understand? This one, I just leave it for a minute, just to see. The alcohol attacks this lactone and then this CO bond breaks and then you get a CH2OH and then Bridget alcohol is there. So, this will become a 6 membered ring and you can see this 6 membered ring is the diene. This 6 membered ring is the diene and this is the dienophile. So, that means this should be able to prepare or synthesize from this diene and this dienophile. So, Nikolaus total synthesis had two key reactions. One that is the 
diels all reaction to make this a as well as c ring okay you can see this is a ring and this is c ring so both a and c rings are made by diels all reaction and the b ring the b ring was made by the famous mcmurray coupling so these are the two key key reactions nicolo has utilized in the total synthesis of taxol so now let us see how he successfully made a ring a c ring and then combine them to get a b c ring and so on first for the a ring he started with ethyl ester state and then treated with the base in the presence of acetone so he could easily introduce the the c c h 3 and reduce the ester with the dibol you get alcohol that alcohol was protected as tvs ether so you get the diene which is ready for the diels all reaction so heated with alpha chloroalkyl nitrile and you get this as the major product followed by hydrolysis with potassium hydroxide dmso you get the ketone now as i said you need for the a ring to interact with c ring you need tosyl hydrazone so the tosyl hydrazone either simple tosyl hydrazone or 26 di isopropyl tosyl hydrazone so he made that and then it's ready okay the a ring is ready now let us see the c ring how he made the c ring so these are the two starting materials now if you treat with phenyl boronic acid phenyl boronic acid see boronic acid what will happen the boron okay will have a lot of affinity towards the hydroxyl group so that way this is the first intermediate which will be formed okay this is the first intermediate which will be formed the two OHs attached to phenyl boronic acid will be replaced by these two I have drawn this structure in such a way that this will undergo an intramolecular diel salt reaction facilitated by the boron bridge intramolecular diel salt reaction and of course when you know when you when you talk about diel salt reaction it will give endo isomer as the major product that is the ester will be endo to the diene which is going to be formed so this is what you will get is it easy to visualize just to see the diene reacts with the dienophile the dienophile is attached to the diene through boron bridge and it undergoes diel salt reaction that is intramolecular diel salt reaction where the ester is now in endo position okay now you have to replace the boron okay very simple you treat with a diol it's very easy to cleave boron um, by treating with a diol so now what will happen the boron will be cleave okay now if you look at this structure you have a diol okay and when you isolate the product this is not the product you get what happens can you visualize how this compound you get how do you get this compound thing some minor rearrangement is happening what type of rearrangement is happening you can see this uh, six member lactone is being broken and a five member lactone is being formed so what happens this lone pair this primary alcohol attacks the carbonyl and breaks the six member lactone so that will give you directly your five member lactone and free this secondary hydroxyl group okay so once you have that now you treat with tbs triflate so what do you expect this alcohol will be protected as tbs ether isn't it no what happens this alcohol attacks the lactone and forms this hydroxyl group without tbs that hydroxyl group is protected as tbs ether plus this hydroxyl also protected as tbs ether okay it's not the protection of secondary hydroxyl group the secondary hydroxyl group attacks the carbonyl of lactone and the final hydroxyl is protected as tbs ether along with the protection of tertiary alcohol now this helps in selectively reducing the ester to get the primary alcohol now once you have the primary alcohol 
camphor sulfonic acid treatment what will happen camphor sulfonic acid treatment that will this is a you know ortho ester is not it this is a ortho ester. So that will hydrolyze the ortho esters. So when it hydrolyzes the ortho ester you get that basically you know if you look at this carefully the ester group was selectively cleaved ester group was selectively cleaved that is all that is the process which originally planned ok. Now the primary alcohol primary alcohol can be easily protected in the presence of secondary alcohol by bulky protecting group. So here you use TBDPS chloride which protected the primary alcohol as TBDPS ether ok. Now what is left you have to protect the secondary alcohol. So the secondary alcohol was protected as benzyl ether with potassium when you treat with potassium hydride and benzyl bromide. So the primary alcohol is protected, secondary alcohol is protected. Now what is required you have to reduce or open this 5 member lactone and functionalize the double bond to hydroxyl group ok. LIH will reduce the 5 member lactone to diol ok. Then when you treat this with dimethoxypropane and camphor sulfonic acid you get this compound. When you treat this with dimethoxymethane and camphor sulfonic acid you get this compound. That means under this condition this TBS also is getting removed and 1 to diol is protected in, in, in the presence of 1 3 diol 1 to diol always gets protected faster if you use acetone or ketone ok. So that is how that was protected leaving the primary alcohol as such. Now when you oxidize the primary alcohol when you oxidize the primary alcohol you get the C ring fragment ok. This is the C ring fragment Nikola wanted for the Shapiro reaction ok. So you take this tosyl hydrazone and then treat with 3 3.3 equivalent of butyl lithium that will generate the vinyl lithium species then quench with this aldehyde. So this reaction as I said it is a Shapiro reaction so you get this allylic alcohol ok. Now you see everything is there A ring is there C ring is there and B ring all the carbon atoms are there only thing is you have to connect these two carbon atoms. Before that you, you have to convert this double bond into a hydroxyl group. So you do epoxidize that double bond selectively that can be achieved by treatment with vanadium acac in the presence of tertiary butyl hydroperoxide you get this epoxide. Then if you treat with LIH, LIH or dibol will give you 1 2 diol. So LIH or dibol will give you 1 2 diol. So you get the 1 2 diol. Once you have the 1 2 diol protect this 1 2 diol as cyclic carbonate. 1 2 diol now is protected as a cyclic carbonate. So A ring is ready, C ring is ready, B ring is almost ready except that they have to carry out McMurray coupling here. For carrying out McMurray coupling here what you need is aldehyde on both sides. So if you treat with TBAF both TBS and TBDPS could be removed. Then oxidation with the TBAF tetra n propyl ammonium peruthenate gives you the dialdehyde. Now the dialdehyde under McMurray coupling titanium 0 you could get the corresponding dial. Okay. So you have the dial now. So now if you look at this carefully you have constructed A ring, you have constructed B ring and you have constructed C ring. Now what you need to do you need to do for some functional group transformation and also attach the side chain. So before that whatever we have done they are all racemic is not it we have not started with any asymmetric chi chiral starting material. So we have started with all racemic starting material. So this product is also racemic. If you want to convert this into a chiral one obviously you have to resolve. So the resolution was done with caffeine chloride. The caffeine chloride reacts with this alcohol and this is this can be 
both dial can be beta, both dial can be alpha. Okay, these are the two uh, you know plus and minus uh, uh, dial, but present in 50-50. And using this, you can separate this isomer. And then hydrolysis of this will give you the dial. Now this is chiral. Now this is chiral. So once you have that acetic anhydride, DMAP. So selectively one can acetylate the allylic alcohol, then you oxidize the secondary alcohol, oxidize the secondary alcohol with TPAP to get the ketone. Now if you look at this B ring is fully functionalized, B ring is fully functionalized. Now what is required is fully functionalized C ring. So for that you need a hydroxyl group here. So that was successfully done with uh, borane THF and then further oxidation to get that alcohol. Now removal of this astronide, when you remove this astronide you get a triol. The triol if you look at carefully, if you treat with acetic anhydride DMAP, only the primary alcohol will be acetylated, the secondary and tertiary will be as such if you use only one equivalent. Then you want to form an oxidane intermediate, for that the secondary alcohol should be made as a good leaving group. Okay. So before that, so the benzyl group was removed and then protected as TES ether. Okay. Then subsequently this was mesylated, the secondary alcohol was mesylated to get the corresponding mesyl group. Now potassium carbonate methanol hydrolyze selectively the primary acetate here. Then you get the primary alcohol, this upon treatment with tetrabutyl ammonium acetate in the presence of methyl ethyl ketone gives the oxytane ring, it is a SN2 reaction. Okay. So for the C ring, to complete the C ring you need acetylation, so that was done easily with acetic anhydride DMAP. Now you have to open this cyclic carbonate with phenyl lithium, you can see selectively open this cyclic carbonate to get the benzoate. If you look at this is CH2, is not it? This is CH2, you need CHOH. So PCC and sodium acetate carries out that allylic oxidation to alpha, beta and such a ketone. Then if you reduce the sodium borohydrate methanol, you get the corresponding alcohol. And this alcohol upon treatment the sodium hexamethyl diacylacide and this beta lactam, I will tell you how this beta lactam is made, a commercially one can make in large quantity. So that will, that free hydroxyl will open up and you get this intermediate. Now if you look at this intermediate, except these two, all are present in taxol. So basically you have to remove the TES group. So removal of the TES group in this intermediate with HF ferridine gave taxol. Okay. So it is so simple, straightforward, but thinking wise, you know, very, very, you know, complex molecule. And the side chain was made from this chiral alcohol that is uh, phenyl uh, cyclohexyl alcohol and then this, this was attached to that. Now if you treat with LDA, this hydrogen is subtracted by LDA and then it forms the enolate. That enolate upon, quench, enolate upon quenching with this imine, okay, it forms this beta lactam. Okay. Now PMP is paramethoxyphenyl group that can be cleaved with CAN and then protected as benzyl chloride, so N benzoate and that is the one which was used to attach the side chain. Okay. So overall if you look at the total synthesis of Niccolo, Niccolo used cleverly two reactions, one the diel salt reaction, intermolecular diel salt reaction to construct the A ring and intramolecular diel salt reaction to construct the C ring. Later he used McMurray coupling to make the highly strained 8 member ring. Now all this you know, standard functional group transformation. So he could successfully complete the total synthesis of taxol. So tomorrow what we will do, we will talk about the total synthesis of taxol by Robert Halter. Okay, thank you.